In this video, I'll be going over the latest updates on the weather here in Europe as storms move in from the Atlantic. Fortunately, much of the European continent can expect generally tame weather with really nothing too impactful in the near future, but there are still some details I'd like to bring to your attention about some of these incoming storms. Beyond that, I also have an update on the total solar eclipse coming up over North America on April 8th, 2024. I've already gotten some requests from my viewers to talk about this total solar eclipse, so I've prepared a special custom graphic which will be presented later in this discussion. One last thing before we do start today's video, I wanted to mention that a significant severe weather outbreak occurred in the United States yesterday, March 13th, which resulted in multiple dangerous thunderstorms. One of these storms did organize into this incredible textbook supercell under a very volatile atmosphere, which you can now see on your screen. So now we're going to start off today's video with a general overview of Europe, and we don't have anything too major happening at this time, but as we head into the weekend and even early next week, there's going to be a few things to take note of. Right now there's a system over Scandinavia which I did point out in my last video, and this storm is helping to bring rain and snowfall across the region after a period of drier weather. By Friday, March 15th, there's another storm system which is currently bringing some rain across Ireland and the UK, and that's going to eventually push into Norway, Sweden, and Finland. With colder air in place, I expect a swath of snowfall to develop, slowly sliding across the region through Sunday. By the beginning of next week, some models do suggest the same system drifting into the Baltic countries, so we may see some snow showers across the region. And then more storms from the Atlantic will move in, bringing more rainfall across parts of Europe. That's generally what we're looking at for the next five days, so with that in mind, here's the latest precipitation forecast for March 14th through the 19th. Thankfully, I'm not seeing any extreme precipitation totals across Europe, with much of southern and eastern areas seeing mostly light precipitation. Once you head into the more northern and northwestern areas such as the Nordic countries, Benelux, and the UK, then you're going to start seeing some more widespread heavy rainfall, but even still, it's going to be pretty average. Now, as far as snowfall totals go, here's an update on what you can expect in that same time frame. It looks quite possible that the majority of Norway, Sweden, and Finland will be getting snowfall, with that well-defined swath from southern Norway into southern Finland being a direct result from that storm moving through between March 15th and the 18th. If you are in that purple shade, then you may have snow accumulations in the 15 to 25 centimeter range. Now going back to this map, let's look ahead to the first half of next week. There's a couple things I'm going to be watching for in this time frame, one of which is this system swirling over northeastern Europe. That's actually the same storm which is going to bring a swath of snow across the Nordic countries, but it does look like we're going to still see this storm stick around with snow showers and perhaps some marginally colder air by next week. By the 19th, we're going to see more activity moving northeastward from the Atlantic, but there's something perhaps more notable and we're going to zoom all the way into the Middle East. Rewind this back to March 18th and then focus in over Egypt, which is where I expect a storm to seemingly develop out of thin air. Watch how it develops very quickly, spreading torrential rainfall across Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Iraq, and Syria, reaching Turkey and Iran not long after. Going through the day on March 19th, we should see this storm continuously crash into some of this mountainous terrain in eastern Turkey and northwestern Iran, before finally advancing beyond the Caspian Sea by March 20th. This is what the precipitation map could look like by March 24th, and focusing on Europe initially, you will notice that there isn't much improvement as far as precipitation totals, especially across Central and South Central Europe, while western areas do seem to be taking the brunt of those Atlantic storms. Looking towards the Middle East, we have widespread red shades showing up across Syria, Iraq, Turkey, and Iran, which represents well over 100 millimeters of liquid precipitation. If you do live in those areas, I would be mindful of the risk of flash floods. So that was a quick overview of what to expect across Europe and even the Middle East in the near future. If you want to stay updated on ever-changing weather, especially across Europe and the United States, definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel. For now, please enjoy Chapter 2. Chapter 2 of this video is going to be a little bit different because today we're going to be talking about that solar eclipse coming up. Here's my custom graphic for the total solar eclipse for April 8th, 2024. 
The path of the eclipse will begin over the South Pacific Ocean, reaching continental North America through Mexico's Pacific coast by 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. It will then enter the United States through Texas, crossing the states of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Once it does cross the continental United States, it's going to move into Canada, entering through southern Ontario before moving through Quebec, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Cape Breton, and then exiting continental North America around 5 p.m. Newfoundland Daylight Time. Some of the larger population centers across North America included in the path of the total solar eclipse are as follows. In Mexico, we have Mazatlan and Torreon. In the United States, we have San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, all in Texas. Then in Indianapolis, Indiana, Cleveland, Ohio, Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse, all in New York. Lastly, in Canada, we have Montreal. Please note that many other smaller towns and cities are included in the path of this eclipse, not to mention how many more areas will actually see a partial solar eclipse. For more information about this event, please visit science.nasa.gov. The link to that website, as well as a few other good sources, is included in the description down below. If you have any further questions about the solar eclipse or about the weather, consider leaving a comment down below. If you enjoyed today's forecast and discussion, don't forget to drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And with that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next forecast.